I'm starting up for bullying, and if you're watching this, then I need your help. For any parent that has ever dropped their child off at school with a bullying situation, you will know how heartbreaking it is to leave your child in a place where you worry how they will be treated and if they're going to be hurt physically or mentally. I have four children aged 9, 8, 7 and 5. Since October last year, my grade 2 and 3 children have been continuously bullied. My kindergarten child was roughed up against a tree by four 10-year-old boys. Four 10-year-old boys against one 5-year-old child roughed him up against a tree, fist to his arm and his hand. No adult saw this. No supervisor saw this. The elder children should not have been in that area. They were not stopped. Supervisor only approached after she saw my daughter and her friends go over to see if my son was okay. With an excessive amount of numerous complaints, I am at the point today that I have had to keep my grade 3, 2 and kindergarten child at home because Kent Elementary is an unsafe environment. We contacted the school approximately two weeks ago, the school board two weeks ago. I have been constantly in the school's office. Most days of the week, I am in the office complaining or dealing with physical and mental bullying on behalf of my children. The school board were involved, are involved. They were aware, they are aware that my children, particularly my grade three child, is getting extremely bullied. It's having, um, it's having um, a terrible effect on his mind. You look at him and he seems like he's running around and he's happy. But he's not. I asked him if it hurt where he had been punched. And his answer to me was, it doesn't hurt that much because I got used to being punched and hit at school. It took everything I had within my body not to cry in front of him and just give him a hug. I go to sleep at night crying, wondering what's going to happen to me the next day. Yesterday I picked them up from school and my grade two and three year old sons were physically hurt yet again. Three boys versus one of my sons grabbed him, held him like this, punched him over and over in the face. Here, this is enough, but he's still hurting him today. They then pulled him, kicked him to the ground and punched him further into the head. Nobody saw this. No supervisor, no adult intervened. One of those same children with another two children, then proceeded later to physically attack my other child. Again, one of these children were in the wrong play area, no one stopped them to go in there. My other child, who was then attacked, was held in the same manner, like this, while he was punched in the face, but mainly in the rib cage, into his stomach and his chip. The supervisor didn't see the principal came along and saw the end of it and finally intervened from what I gather. The principal tells me that child was finally one of them was suspended. However, that is after months and months and months of me complaining. It's the first action they've ever taken. When I picked them up from school, I had to take them to the doctors and get them checked over. The school didn't tell me what happened. The school didn't call me or email me. I had to contact them and ask them what had happened. The majority of the time when my children are hurt at school, the school does not contact me. I have to find out myself and then tell the school and ask them what's happened and they investigate the next day. I took my children to the doctors. 
have been tipped over. Came home. Made decisions to keep them home today. Going back a few weeks, my husband and I were picking up our children from school, waiting in the hallway for one of my other children. And there was a boy, a grade six boy, 12 years old, 11 or 12 years old, walked up to my son, who was at the other end of the hallway, doing nothing, talking to no one, completely unprovoked. He walked up to him, bent his whole body round to the side, and plunked my son completely into the rib cage. He ran off as it was busy. We didn't get time, my husband and I didn't reach either of them in time to get to this boy. My husband and I immediately reported it to the principal. We took the kids out, we took them to Lego Club, and whilst we were at the library, that same son of mine told me that he had been bitten at school by a different child. Showed me the bite mark. We have photographic evidence. Went to tell the teacher straight away. Went to tell the principal. The principal tells us um, the next day that he had called his dad. No action was taken. The grade six boy that we saw physically punch our child um, that my husband and I witnessed with our own eyes a week later my husband emailed the principal to find out, to get a follow-up on what happened, to find out what the repercussions had been from that child punching my child. The principal sent me an email, a short line or two, saying that he had spoken to the child concerned and the child told him that he thought he was being funny and that he would not do it again. That child physically assaulted my son right in front of our eyes and nothing was done about it. A week before my grade two child was pulled off a slide, punched in the head and then thrown to the ground and had wood chips, pl wood chips put on his head. Nobody saw that. The following day that same child pulled my son over, got on top of him, put his knee into his chest, put wood chips in his mouth. My eldest son has been told that if he needs to go find the principal at any time, that he can. During their lunch time, they eat in the classroom and they have other children, older children, monitor them while they eat. My child came back from school and had hardly eaten any of his lunch. I asked him why he hadn't. And he told me because he couldn't, because a boy was picking on him. And when I asked him what had happened, he told me... He told me that this boy was pulling his lunch away, waving it around. And when my son finally managed to get back from him, he kept pulling his chair and his stool out from underneath him so he couldn't sit down. And my child tried to fight back and couldn't, so eventually just went and got another chair by which time there was no time left to eat his food during this time he asked in monitors who hadn't stopped it if he could go and see the principal and they refused to let him go another time i was dropping my children off for school they were happy like they normally are i wanted to play in the playground we didn't have time took my children into the classroom and I went to set my kindergarten child out. When I came out of the kindergarten class, my grade two child was stood outside the classroom waiting for me and started pouring his eyes out. He said he didn't want to go to school and I asked him why not and he wouldn't tell me. This went on for about 10 minutes and I asked him if he wanted 
to the police teacher and he said no he only wanted the principal so I took him to see the principal um, who wasn't there and as it happens there was a childcare counsellor I ended up having to leave my son at school crying because he didn't tell me what was wrong and because I couldn't take him home because of that Later that same day, I picked my children up and the vice principal calls me over and tells me that this same child of mine had not been listening to her at lunch time and she told him to get off the swing three times and he refused to listen. In addition to that, during lunch time, he had been um, trying to visit his sister, go to her classroom. And she, she, there was monitors outside the door, um, and the monitors wouldn't allow him through. And he got told off because he tried to go and see his sister three times. And they asked him why, and he said because he had a secret. They wouldn't let him see him, and he got told off. So when the vice principal told me this, I'm thinking, well, no wonder he doesn't want to listen to you, because he's getting thumped physically, mentally hurt, and none of you are doing anything about it. He has no respect for you, and nor should he. And as far as going to see his sister at lunchtime and telling her a secret, I don't think that's disobedience. I think that's the actions of a child who cries her heart out in the morning because he doesn't want to go to school. These are just a few of the things that have happened. It's unacceptable for a school, especially during this time, to be allowed to get away with not passing on consequences for physical bullying. These similar situations have been going on for months. Well, I've taken it to the school board and the school board are aware. After the school board being aware, two more incidents have occurred physically bullying their child. Due to that, I now hold not only the school responsible, but I also hold the school board accountable for their actions. The school board has failed us. I will do anything within my power to protect my children. And I will not stop until they are safe. If you're watching this, that means I need your help. Please send us files 